Hey y'all, it's Brady. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we're going to be talking books, what I've been reading and listening to over the last three to four months. We're going to call this our spring and summer update. So let's jump in and we'll talk about all things books. All right, so, um, couple of things real quick is this is mainly going to be about books, but I may also throw in some podcasts. I've got my list over here. So if I'm looking over to the side as I'm talking, that's why. Because you know your girl can talk, 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 and forget what she was saying and ramble in 12 different directions. So we're going to do that and we're going to hopefully stay on topic. Um, so anyways, if you're new here, hi, hello, welcome, so glad to have you here. Um, we are a family of four. It is myself, my husband, and our eight and four-year-old girls. Life is crazy busy. Um, I normally work part-time, plus I'm in school full-time because I have gone back to college to become a nurse. And um, then I have YouTube, plus, you know, running a household. My husband works full-time, the girls are in school full-time. However, it is summer break, so I am not doing any classes this summer. I'm also really not working my part-time job now, um, and the girls are obviously home. So, life looks a little bit different. Um, so, that's also why there's a change of scenery. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, so if you're new here and you like grocery hauls and cooking videos and a little bit of daily life stuff thrown in there, um, then I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and stick around. If you are not new and you are just returning, I am so glad you have come back. Hi, hello, and welcome back. So, hopefully it's not too loud. <laughs> um, like I said, my kids are home, and so um, it's just life. Um, I tried to throw on a little bit of makeup and kind of put myself together, but I did just get out of the gym. Uh, we came home and had lunch, and then I was like, shoot, I've got to film this video because i got to get it up today. Um, we, I don't know, my youngest had a little virus thing, so I don't know. It was just a fever. That was it. Just a fever. Um, back at the beginning of the week, and so some of my filming stuff just didn't, just got away from me. So, we're in my room. I've bribed them with their show for a moment, and hopefully we're going to get through this video without many interruptions. But, I think that's all the yammering off topic stuff that I have for you hopefully. I don't know if y'all heard that. I don't know what they're yelling at each other but I think we're fine. It'll be fine. Okay. Okay so let's start with what I just finished reading. Um, and when I say reading most of these have actually been audiobooks. Um, I use the Libby app and the Hoopla app um, which both of those our library pairs with to have access to audiobooks, video, CDs, CDs, show my age there, music. Um, but um, with that, I, I kind of go between those two. So I listen to a lot of the books that I actually read. Uh, it's just easier for me. I can pop my one earbud in and get stuff done around the house and then quickly stop and you know, hang out with my kids or do whatever needs to be done and be able to keep going and it keeps me reading more. So if you want to do that and you don't want to spend the money for an app that you pay for, um, that's a great option. I just, I was even during the pandemic is really when I got into it and our library was closed to going inside, but um, I was able to get because from where we had moved to, yada, yada, I didn't have a library card anymore, needed a new one, was able to do it online and just get the barcode number that I needed to plug, the membership number to plug into the app, and then you have access to them. So um, check that out. Also, um, I will link as many of these as I can find on Amazon. I will link them down below for you, so you can check that out too if, it's, if you want to get the physical copy or the Kindle copy or even an audio version, okay? Okay, so I just finished reading The Lazy Genius Way by Kendra Adachi and Something Wilder by Christina Lauren. Those are the two that I just finished up last week. And The Lazy Genius Way, y'all, Kendra is amazing. 
So I should also say that that also ties into the podcast I've been listening to lately, um, one of which is the Lazy Genius podcast. Um, and Kendra is just so relatable. I mean, she just really is. Like, you can just, she's not giving you a bunch of shoulds and all, all those things with trying to get, you know, things organized or decluttered or, um, you know, whatever it may be. She really is just like, here's some practical tips and here's kind of my thought process behind why. Um, and she does read the audio version, which I always love when authors read their own audio versions. Um, it's just even better to me because I feel like they're just sitting there talking with you, which I love even more. So anyways, The Lazy Genius Way, it's kind of, it's a nonfiction book. It is about um, just lazy. She kind of divides the book into like, Here's my definition of lazy, doesn't mean bad. And here's my definition of genius, doesn't always mean good um, or bad. So she's, you know, what is her tagline? I think she even says it in her podcast too. But it's basically like be a genius about the things that matter to you and uh, lazy about the things that don't. And so it's just a great way to kind of look at things and break down ways that you do things or what you keep or how you do things without, you know, a bunch of rules, just some practical tips. She does have a new book out too, um, that I don't have a copy of yet, but it's the Lazy Genius Kitchen, I believe. Um, and she's also got a YouTube channel that she does some episodes and stuff on. So I'll link everything that I can down below for you. Um, and then Something Wilder is a fiction book. It's, again, by Christina Lauren. I don't, I don't think she read, she read it. No, I think it was two different people. Um, but it's basically, I don't remember now where they've been at, Colorado maybe. Um, and, you know, classic story, she goes on a, um, this whole thing. So there's like long lost love and then it ties into kind of like a mystery and also her finding herself. Um, it was kind of different though than some other things that I've read the way it was written and I did, I did enjoy it. I would definitely recommend it. Um, it's a fairly easy read. Again, I listened to it on audio, um, but it was a fairly easy read there. Currently, I am listening to The Summer Place by Jennifer Weiner, and I think she does read it, the audio version. I think she does read it. I don't know. I'll have to go back um, and check that to see if it's her, because she's not a um, an author that I'm super familiar with, and so I don't recognize her voice right offhand to remember if it's her or if it's someone else. Um, let's see. Okay, but some things that I have finished up listening to, I really love Colleen Coble and Lucy Foley, so I've read more of their stuff. Um, I did recently finish The Paris Apartment by uh, Lucy Foley. Um, it was really, really good. With Honestly, with Lucy Foley, I expected nothing less. Um, and so that one is a mystery, but okay, here's how I am with mysteries. I love mysteries, but I don't like a lot of gore, um, like horror stuff, if that breaks that down a little bit. Um, I don't know. It's just not my thing. Um, but Lucy Foley books to me are a good middle ground with that. Now, there's been a lot of love it, hate it, um, of the Paris apartment specifically, but basically, this guy lives in this apartment and in Paris, and his sister is, they're originally from the UK. His sister comes to visit and can't get a hold of him and can't figure out what happened. Um, but somehow she gets access to his apartment and she gets in there and then she starts, you get to meet all these characters that live in this building and they all have secrets. Um... And so you're kind of trying to figure out where her brother is and what happened. And, um, yeah, there were some twists that I did that weren't really twists to me that I kind of saw coming, but then there were some that I still feel like she did a good job at being like, wow, 
Um, I don't remember if I recommended them in my last video of what I'd been reading and listening to, but I had read another, I had listened to, I think it was The Wedding Party, The Wedding List, or The Wedding Party, and then The Hunting Party. Um, yeah. Those are the other two Lucy Foley books that I've read, listened to. Um, and she does not read them. I wish she would. I actually did listen to her on a podcast um, talking about maybe the hunting party. I don't remember. Um, but I'll link those down below too. They're just really good mysteries. Um, I think what I would, she kind of fits into the, like the Agatha Christie genre, but it's all updated current day kind of thing. So if that, if you like that style of like murder mystery, mystery type thing, then I think you'll really like it. Again, some people, didn't love the Paris apartment. So if you've read it or listened to it, let me know down in the comments if that's been your thing. Um, but I did. I did enjoy it. Um, and then again, I really like Colleen Coble. So I read a few more of her books over the last several months. Um, a couple of series. I think Alaska Twilight. That was the one I most recently finished of hers. And it, I don't think is part of a series. I think it's a one-off. Um, so that's Alaska Twilight. Basically, this girl is a photographer and she has not been in connection with her parents for many, many years. And she goes back on this trip with this adventure guy and like his whole crew. So there's another guy, like a videographer. Her grandmother is also on the trip with her. She brings her little dog and she meets a guy that lives there in like the Alaska bush. Um, and some things of course start happening and people died and now she's trying to figure it out. And also try to figure out some things from her past. So I really like it. I think it's really good. Uh, Colleen Coble, a lot of her stuff is not like super heavy reads, um, but it is super interesting. So I, I like that take a lot. I also read of Colleen Coble's uh, Where the Sh Where Shadows Meet and Strands of Truth. Again, kind of like murder mystery type things. Seagrass Pier and Rosemary Cottage. Those are part of a series and I cannot remember for the life of me what the first one is in that series. Um, but I read them in order and those were really, really good too. A, lo a lot of her books focus on different coastlines um, and a bunch of characters that live, you know, in fiction, of course, live there. Um, and so then it's like a murder mystery. And then, you know, there's a lot of really interesting stuff to it too. So, um, and then one other author I wanted to mention is Carla Lariano. I read three of her books. I may have mentioned the first one, which is Saturday Night Supper Club. Um, in my last video, um, but then I did finally read the other two books that follow up to that or from that. So basically it's the Saturday Night Supper Club is the first one. And then Brunch at Bittersweet Cafe is the second one. And the third one in the series is the Solid Grounds Coffee Company. And um, it's basically the all three novels center around a group of three friends. Uh, Melody, Anna, and Rachel. So Rachel is the first one. She's a chef. And the first book is pretty much all about her and her life and some things that transpire. And then, of course, you know, with the typical storyline, she meets a guy, you know, all that sort of thing. Um, so there is romance to it for sure, but it's also a lot of um, self-development and self-improvement and... Um, finding out things and, you know, really discovering her own, coming into her own, I guess, as a character. So that's in there. Rachel is the chef. She's the first one in Saturday Night Supper Club. But then the other two do play into the all three books. Uh, the second one is Brunch at Bittersweet Cafe. That one is Melody's, mainly Melody's story. And um, again, Anna and Rachel are also thrown in there too. And then... Um, Solid Grounds Coffee Company focuses on Anna, but it also focuses on 
Um, I think his name is Brian. Uh, but it's another character that they kind of introduce. And they actually do quite a bit of focus on him as well, which I thought was interesting. And again, it's just a lot of character development and kind of fighting back against things they've believed about themselves or about life in general um, and just really coming into their own. So those are the books that I have for you. I'll leave all those linked down below. I did want to mention that um, I am also, I, well, okay. As spring wrapped up, I definitely listened to some podcasts, but then I listened to more books as summer has started. Um, I was in the car a lot <laughs> between my school stuff and the girls' school stuff and back and forth taking kids to school every day. So I did, I find myself doing a lot more podcasts when I'm in the car a lot and we have just been home a lot, which has been wonderful. So, um, we have, I think the only new podcast that I've listened to is the Kendra Adachi one, which is the Lazy Genius podcast, but she's phenomenal. I still wholeheartedly recommend, uh, the For the Love podcast, which is Jen Hatmaker's podcast and the Office, Office Ladies podcast. Um, and I still want to read their book. So Angela Kinsey and... What is her name? Jenna Fisher. Um, they're two of the ladies on The Office. And I'll be quite honest, The Office was never like really my type of humor and it's still not. But my husband, on the other hand, absolutely loves it. And so I've really kind of, we've watched it a lot. <laughs> I've seen all the episodes a ton of times. And I actually just really like listening to the two of them talk and I like to hear a lot of the behind the scenes things. So if you're an Office fan and you like to hear a lot of the behind the scenes, they break down each episode um, and go through a lot of that, um, the details. They talk to different other cast members and directors and set designers and um, producers and it's really interesting. So you get to find out a lot of cool stuff and just listen to them talk. They do have a new book out that I do want to listen to or read. So that's on my list again with the new Kendra Adachi book also. And then I need to finish up um, reading The Pioneer Woman. I cannot think of what it's called. Frontier Follies or something like that. Um, I need to finish that book. I have the physical copy of that book that I've had for like a year and a half and I've not finished it. Which is really weird because I love Pioneer Woman and think that'd be the first thing that I'd pick up but it hasn't been. Uh, it's really, really funny when you read it. There's a lot of stuff in there, but there's just, I don't know. I don't know. I just didn't. I haven't read it yet. So that's on my list to finish that up and hopefully I'll be able to report back in the fall and tell you what I've actually, <laughs> that I finished it. So we'll see. Um, and then I don't know if I mentioned it in the last one either, but I am still listening to, when I listen to podcasts, like I mentioned, um, I am still listening to, oh my gosh, That Sounds Fun um, by Annie F. Downs. And there's also another book of hers that I just read in the last month or two also. And of course, now I can't think of what it's called. I don't think it's the That Sounds Fun book, but it might be. <laughs> I don't know. Now I'm going to have to look it up and um, I'll try to link that one down below for you too. And all of those are just wherever you find podcasts and listen to them, of course. Oh, that's the dog. I was like, what is that noise? Uh, but anyways, so yeah, that's the thing. I thought about incorporating a few things of like what we've been reading or I also thought about incorporating like things we've been watching, but honestly, we haven't watched a whole lot of TV. Um, we've watched The Masked Singer with the girls. Um, that's been a family favorite. Um, so we've watched that with the girls. And of course, it's been off for about a month now. So we finished that up. And then we kind of got into watching Holy Moly as a family, which is hilarious. Uh, it's like putt-putt, and then all these different people kind of compete. If you haven't seen that, it was kind of good. Uh, 
I think they have like four or five seasons now. So it's been out a while, but we were new to it. And otherwise, I don't know that we've really watched much of anything new. Like I said, you know, I, oh, oh, yes, I have. Yes, I have. So, um, on the Magnolia Network, which is on Discovery Plus, I don't know if it's actually a channel outside of Discovery Plus, but if you can find it, it's really good too. And it's called Zoe Bakes, and it's a show that is with uh, Zoe Francois. She is a pastry chef. Hold on. I thought I was going to sneeze, but I guess I didn't. Anyways, Zoe Francois, she's a pastry chef. And she just shows you fun new things to make. And it's really good. It's really chill. I don't like shows that are super duper hyped up. A lot of those kill me. But I do like the ones where she's just kind of talking to you. They do go each episode and kind of like visit somebody different. So she goes to a dairy farm in her area and like makes cheese with them. Um, she goes to a place in her area and I think they're in Minneapolis. I think that's where she's at is Minnesota. Um, but anyways, so she goes to like a grain mill and kind of like a micro mill, I guess is what you would call that. I don't know. Um, and so like they go through different flowers and all these things. Uh, she made a crepes episode. She made an episode all about cheesecake and actually made like a savory cheesecake too. So that was kind of cool. She did one on pumpkin. Um, she also did one on baked Alaska, which was pretty fun. If you've never seen that, uh, it is really cool. It's got like ice cream layers and cake and stuff and then meringue. And then you, you know, toast the meringue on the outside. It's pretty cool. So if you haven't seen that show and you have access to Discovery Plus, or if you can get the Magnolia Network on TV, we don't have cable. We just stream. So we have Discovery Plus, we have Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, of course, <laughs> and Paramount Plus. Um, those are the main things. We really pretty much watch Discovery Plus or Hulu. But if you have any recommendations, leave those down below. I would love to know what you're reading, what you're listening to, what you are watching, uh, that sort of thing. I would love to know. I really enjoy getting to hear from y'all in the comments and getting to chat with y'all. So if you've made it this far and you've not said hello before, even if you're not new, you've been here a while, just never said hello, please leave me a comment down below. Introduce yourself. And if you feel comfortable sharing, you can share, you know, what part of the world you're in. I would love to know. And uh, yeah, I will connect with y'all in the comments down below until our next video. Bye, y'all.